Okay, so information just passed along to us. Uh, there are 14 of the first 16 adjudicated claims that have been approved and authorized. So 14 of our island's beloved Manamco from our island's greatest generation with us today as you are looking live. As they are our honored guests, uh, but certainly their sacrifice, their suffering, and in no small means, their patience. Uh, before um, we go ahead and begin our program there, um, we do have members of the Leon Guerrero Tenorio Cabinet joining us here this morning. But in particular, uh, the agency that has been uh, entrusted with executing this program along with the governor's office has been the Department of Administration. So um, at this time, before we begin, if I could ask you to please give us a please give a round of applause and acknowledgement to <laughs> Director Ed Burke, the Director of the Department of Administration, and of course, our Deputy Director, Edith Hendrick. So ladies and gentlemen, we I think I'm um, giving the green light. We are gonna go ahead and begin our program. So The suspense is part of the program, I assure you. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Imagahagan Mami, Imagahagan Guahan, the governor of Guam, Luli Guerrero, and the Sugundu Megalahi, our lieutenant governor of Guam, Joshua and Tenorio. Today is indeed an historic day for our community and for the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration. You may be seated as I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our distinguished guests who are joining here. First and foremost are the members of our island's greatest generation, our Manamco who have been able to join us today. Let's give a big round of applause for all of them who are here with us. And of course, those who are with us in spirit. We'd also like to recognize Speaker Tina Rose Munia Barnes, Speaker of the Guam Legislature. <laughs> Legislative Secretary, Senator Amanda Shelton. <laughs> Senator Kelly Marsh Titano. <laughs> Senator Therese Terlahi. <laughs> Senator Pido Terlahi. Senator Tello Taidegui and Senator Will Castro. We also have with us former speak speaker and our current public auditor, the Honorable Benjamin J. Cruz. Also joining us, who just arrived, we want to welcome former Congresswoman Madeline Z. Bregalio back to the Former Congressman Robert Underwood. And former Senator Frank Blas Jr. As we will hear in today's program, uh, there have been other uh, members of Congress and individuals, elected officials have been instrumental throughout this entire process. And so we want to welcome, of course, the family of former Congressman Antonio B. Wampat and her son, Melvin Juan Pat Borja. The family of former speaker, Antonio Mpinko, represented by Miss Emily Mpinko, and their son, Carlo Mpinko. And the family of former Senator Cecilia Bamba, represented by former Senator George Bamba, along with members of their family, Joyce, Tammy, Patrick, and Paul Bamba. Let's give them a round of applause. And although not uh, able to be with us, we want to recognize the family of former Congressman Ben Bloss. 
At this time, I'd like to call up to the podium our Lieutenant Governor of Guam, Joshua F. Tenorio. As you can see from the introductions, this long-standing issue of war claims has um, really been made possible by the work of our leadership for decades and decades. Um, and of course, uh, they mentioned our first delegate, Congressman Antonio B. Wampat, who introduced the first federal legislation. Um, and uh, former Senator Cecilia Bamba, who really organized um, many people in the Guam society in our island uh, to mobilize this effort seeking justice, which is really what this issue is. And so um, for the first speaker that I'd like to bring up to you is um, the sponsor of the local legislation that made it possible for us to utilize our local monies to advance these payments so that we could seek, we could address uh, our Manamco as soon as possible. And so ladies and gentlemen, Speaker Tina Munya Barnes. and Manana Sitsus. Many of God's blessings to all of you here today. Uh, Magahaga and Segundo Magalani, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the first speaker. And last time I said I was speechless, even more so now because the true realization of everybody who played a part on making this happen, for having the faith and belief that the greatest generation that ever lived will be able, even if it was just a little, to be compensated. Today, with all the hard work with my co-sponsors, Senator Amanda Shelton and Senator Will Castro, with the support and the vote of my colleagues in the 35th Guam legislature, a lot of the senators are here, to the former, to my former colleagues, you're here. To the colleagues who continue, like Senator Frank Bloss, who continue to honor and pay tribute to Oman Amku every single year, Speaker BJ Cruz, um, Uncle Tony Ampinko and Emily, if he were here today, like I said earlier, he would be really happy because he said, never, never forget what our people have gone through. And though it was a war that was never asked for, the people of Guam prevailed. To all the congressional delegates, Congressman Underwood, Congressman Ben Bloss, Congresswoman Madeline Bergalio, thank you for the wisdom, for trying and never giving up. To the committee, to my partner, Speaker BJ Cruz, um, you saw and you heard the stories with the commission and you never let it down. To all of you here today, to the greatest generation that ever lived, for believing that at least this gift that you rightfully deserve is finally becoming a reality. And Governor, it is because of your strength and your persistence of never giving up with your Segundo Magalahi, the saying that if it's for our people, we are gonna let it happen and we are not going to quit. Thank you for having the faith to have your administration, the Chief of Staff, to believe that we could make this happen make sure we harass the treasury and the united states that our people deserve so much more and ladies and gentlemen our journey is not over i know i only have a couple of minutes here but our journey is not over i came here and i had several monocles in my office saying we gave our application and it wasn't submitted because our names and our numbers are not there I'm not going to leave any stone unturned. I will continue to work really hard from my heart, to work with my colleagues, to work with anybody in Congress that can hear our story, to make sure that every survivor of World War II here on our island that deserved this claim 
that we will try and work it for them. I'm just asking, please don't give up hope because we will try our very best. So again, on behalf of our people of Guam, the 35th Guam Legislature, for continuing to know that Guam is truly a paradise that we are so blessed to live in and that our people know that if we continue to work together, we can make anything and everything happen for our people. God bless Guam and God bless our greatest generation that has ever lived so that we may be able to live today. I am here because you guys had to suffer the atrocities. And I know my dad is looking down from heaven and he's saying, with all my other uncles and aunties and my family members and my brother, good job, girl. See you tomorrow. Thank you to uh, this legislation was uh, championed and shepherded by a bi bipartisan group of legislators here in Guam. Now, the first uh, significant federal legislation that was passed in order to get federal recognition for these Guam war claims was an act that was introduced by and shepherded, shepherded into law by former Congressman Robert Underwood. And so I'd like to ask Congressman Underwood, the author of the Guam War Claims Review Commission statute, uh, to say a few words. When it's Tadis, Afadeh Todu Samdu, Afadeh. It's a great honor to be here to recount a few things. And uh, first of all, I want to pay tribute to the administration of uh, Magahaga as uh, Luyang Guerreros and Tigundu Magalai as Josh, who was with me on part of that journey. And we had a very memorable meeting with the chairman of the judiciary at one time uh, on this, uh, uh, this issue. But I wanted to just, uh, first of all, uh, uh, congratulate the administration for making this possible and, and, and turning the issue away from politics and turning it towards people. That's a very important turn that we've made now. It's a very important turn that we've made. And there's three people that I want to mention in, uh, in just in trying to explain two things that happened. One uh, the Lieutenant Governor mentioned was the creation of the War Claims Commission, which made possible uh, BJ and Tony and Pinkle's participation in validating the claims. So that's one. But uh, I think an equally significant one was the creation of the Memorial Wall up in Essen, they overlooked, which we did in uh, my first year in office in uh, December of 1993. And in making that possible, there's uh, one person, two people that I want to publicly acknowledge. One is uh, George Bamba. Uh, George Bamba and I worked very closely together on that legislation, uh, primarily because of his mother. And so we worked hard on making sure that we got those names up there and everybody kept saying, you're just trying to sneak those names in because you're trying to validate war claims. I said, oh, you found us out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one person. And of course, his, his mother, a uh, former senator, and I lived on Papa Street in Snanya. I grew up on Papa Street, and I did not know who Papa was until much later that it was George's grandfather who was killed because he helped an American airman. And so that fueled that whole thing. The other person is uh, Beatrice Emsley, who was, there, who was there at the legislation. It's so hard for her to recount. She, was, she survived a, a, an attempted beheading, and, uh, and uh, it was behind what is now McDonald's in Hagatnia. I still don't know why that's not made into a, uh, a place of honor. But uh, Tan Beatrice, and it was so hard for her to recount that experience. But she did it in front of uh, the committee that helped fuel this. Then in Atres Besangana is this put Sinanaho. Sinanaho, Manyago Sinanaho is a Maningo. Manyago Gilo Guafa, Mate Zunanini, Meet my Vicentus Corentai, Quatuna Sakan, Ezunati Lucy Francis Underwood, Mate Gihalum and Mess. Lo, Todos Tisha and Atresne, 
Tan que nos hace una parte de la senadora Novamba, tan que nos hace una mena potnia, tan Beatriz, da eso es listo para ayudar, da lo que tiene la diseña, tan que mena potnia, tan que no, con tu unas a todos, tan que viene la familia, tan que no se le esté en la casa en Sene Sete. Pues que en el guajo, o agradece todo el texto mío, da usted no agradece que todo el señor Amada Aga, si tú es malo. Thank you very much, Congressman. This federal commission would be named, uh, chairing it would be the chair of the Foreign Settlements Claim Commission, and then we had an opportunity to um, get the Secretary of the Interior, if I'm not mistaken, to make appointments of two uh, leaders that would be part of the federal uh, war claims, the Guam War Claims Commission. Those two people were Speaker Tony and Pinko, uh, and who later would be uh, the former Chief Justice B.J. Cruz, and so I'd like to ask, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Mrs. Ampinko for being here, and I'd like to ask uh, former uh, former uh, Speaker and Chief Justice B.J. Cruz to say a few words. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, Emily, thank you and your family for putting up with Tony and I constantly traveling for that year. Um, we turned in the report on June the 14th, I mean June the 9th of 2014, I mean 2004. <laughs> 2004. It was the week before, it was the month before the 60th anniversary of the liberation. And today we just celebrate, I mean this year we celebrated the 75th and it is finally happening. So I want to thank the governor, the lieutenant governor and the speaker for their efforts to finally move this forward. But I also want to recognize the fact that as um, Delegate Underwood mentioned, that he got legislation passed um, at the very end of his term to create the War Claims Commission and acknowledge uh, Delegate uh, um, Madeline Bedalio for the honor of appointing me. I, it should have gone, it was Tony's but the honor of appointing me to also be on that commission, I not having suffered any of the atrocities of war. But uh, the two of us, uh, through her nomination to the secretary, were able to serve on this commission. And we were able to, after a little over a year, come out with a report where it ended up where we recognized that the United States had a moral obligation to this generation to compensate them for the uh, suffering that they had and to put them on parity with those who suffered elsewhere, like the ones that uh, in the Aleutians and the Alaska settlement uh, uh, claims and also for the, for the Micronesians. And uh, I want to also acknowledge the fact that before Robert, um, Congressman Wompat, when I was in Washington in 83 and 84, had been working on getting legislation passed, I want to acknowledge the, um, the speaker, Speaker Wampat and, and her son uh, for their father's uh, and grandfather's efforts. And I know we recognize everybody, we forgot for the Bamba family, Cecilia, <laughs> the namesake is out, <laughs> uh, and uh, her, her children. Uh, they had all, we had all used those names. And when we were working on the commission, as, a spe as was mentioned, um, I want to recognize Arlene Santos. Um, she and Rose Ramsey, we volunteered for almost eight months and we were down at the farmer's market every single, every single day to uh, meet with, the, with the, uh, this greatest generation and to take their stories. And at the end of the day, we would be sitting there crying and Arlene and Rose and I would ask Tony, can we ask for, for PTSD compensation for having to listen to all the stories and, and crying with everybody else. Um, but um, I want to thank, again, the, the governor for, for her foresight in moving this forward and um, everybody that has worked on it uh, prior to us. But it was an honor to have been on the commission and I'm glad that we were able to finally make the United States realize that they had a moral obligation to us and that the Foreign Settlement Commission um, was able to do 
the uh, review of all the applications. So thank you very much, Governor and the Senate Governor, and all the delegates that preceded us. And thank you, Emily, for coming today and reminding us about Tony. So once this Guam War Claims Commission filed a report, they made a recommendation to the U.S. Congress uh, to make an appropriation to pay for these. Unfortunately, this happened at probably the worst possible time in the Congress when reforms uh, happened to remove set-asides, earmarks, all sorts of things. And so it was a very difficult environment. Um, but uh, the delegate that was able to find the funding a mechanism to empower us to resolve uh, this payment uh, is former Congresswoman Madeline Berdalli. I'd like to invite her to take the podium. Buenas and hot day to all our Manumco, and you know I'm part of your club. <laughs> Don't forget that, I never forget it. When I first took my oath of office in 2003 as a member of the United States Congress representing Guam, it was my passion to do something about war claims because I had been listening to all of those that assisted, the ones that came before me, members of Congress and members of the legislature who always, we should do something, this is an injustice. So I'm very, very pleased to be invited by the governor of Guam today to be here at this meeting. And I want to thank her for the fortitude. And I want to be very blunt for the guts to do what she did. She decided there would be money in the local government here. And she went to the legislature and our very good speaker here made it very possible, ran that bill very quickly, didn't you? And today we're here, a very small group of ours, because there are many recipients in the United States that are now calling the governor's office, which I am the director of in Washington, D.C., asking when will they get their monies. And some of them did not meet deadlines and so forth. But I understand that the adjudication process is well on its way, and I don't have the number. How many are there now adjudicated? only 500 people. So there's just a group here today, but those have been adjudicated, they passed. So they, we have to remember that there are many more uh, to receive this compensation, but it's been my passion. So I wanna thank, first of all, uh, the governor and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio and our entire community for deciding we're gonna do something about this. We can't just keep delaying, delaying, delaying. There's so very few of us left. And I want to thank the legislature, as I mentioned earlier, and our entire community to fulfill a long-awaited promise and finally, finally present the first war claims. This is a day that's going to go down in history. It brings us a step closer to recognizing our Manumco for the atrocities <laughs> that they endured during Guam's occupation during World War II. And Mr. Tamargo was the chairman when BJ and Mr. Mpinko was in Washington. They had hearings in Washington, but we brought the hearing to Guam. And that's where they really realized how people had suffered because they were there as witnesses and heard everything. So to our survivors and all of their families, I want to extend my personal and deeply felt gratitude for your patience and your understanding. You know, I never went through the war. I came here with my family in 1948. There was a great deal of memory of the war. The island didn't look very good. A lot of the bomb out sites were still around. Many military people. And I remember listening to my late husband, Governor Ricky Berdalio, who gave me all the information about going through the war. He was 17 years old. And I'll share this with you. He never had good sight, but he used to bicycle over to the Marine camp. 
And they said, I don't think, son, you see very well. And he said, no, I'm in the front row in class and so forth. And he says, well, let me get a pair of glasses for you. So for the first time, he was able to see leaves on the tree and he had glasses. And then they didn't like his name, Ricardo. We're gonna change that, Ricky. So the Marines gave him the glasses and the name, Ricky. So for that reason too, okay. Now the road in Congress is not easy. Since 2003, I introduced a war claims bill and I want to thank all my predecessors that were thanked here this morning because they did the groundwork too. Every time Congress, uh, you know, two years, and then you have to go over the whole situation again, have to reintroduce the bills, and we did all kinds of things. We went through the uh, natural resources, and then finally we got the idea to put it on the defense bill, of which I was a ranking member at the time of the readiness. So we did, and it went in, because it was war related. And that was the bill that finally made it over to the Senate. And that's where we worked and worked, and it just wasn't going anywhere. So our survivors, as I look out here today, they don't have much time left. Let's hope that they, they're gonna be able to enjoy. It, it's, it's not a very big check. It's not anything you can buy a home with, or a car, or anything else nowadays. But it's something, it's a symbol, and that I hope will come through. So again, I have my thanks to everybody here. Uh, I also uh, wanna give recognition to uh, the Chief of Staff, Tony Babauta, for shepherding this through with the Treasury Department. He did a good job here, everybody helped out. And I said today is a day we won't forget. Remember, January 28th, 2020, or 29th, you changed the date. <laughs> I had a hard time getting here, but boy, nothing could keep me. I was on every plane out there. Uh, the date was changed. So again, <laughs> Governor Lou, Lieutenant Governor Josh, and I would like to close with um, a short reflection from St. Paul, which speaks of your courage and leadership and a reminder to all of us of the reward of unwavering faith. When I talked to my colleagues in Congress, they said, war claims what war? I said, World War II, oh, you mean we haven't taken care of that yet? And that was 70 years, now it's 76 years. But to you, my uncle, you were so kind and so patient other people would be screaming mad, you know, but you were very patient, and I really, really appreciated that, and that's why I worked as hard as I did, to continue the fight. So this is what St. Paul said. You have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. We are a grateful people. So thank you, and see Juice Mossy. Thank you, Congresswoman. So we have a funding source. Uh, the claims are, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the claims have been, uh, or at least the, the legal justification is there. Uh, people have filed these claims, ready to pay, and then there's a technical glitch that was not uh, previously identified uh, by the federal government. But the governor wanted to get this thing done. She wanted to get it paid, actually, she really wanted to get this paid by July 21st uh, of last year in recognition of the 75th anniversary of the liberation. But it is a tall order, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, thinking just a little about politics, we're Democrats in a, a, a Democratic governor in an island territory dealing with a very powerful Trump administration. Uh, and uh, I have to say, and the Congresswoman recognized our chief of staff and between his work uh, and uh, her work in Washington, uh, what was almost looked at as impossible to get the Treasury Department in a Republican, and not any Republican administration, in this Trump administration, to be very open to think outside the box 
and uh, followed the way um, that the path that the governor had suggested, I think is pretty amazing. I really wouldn't think it would be possible, but she made it did. So ladies and gentlemen, the governor of Guam, Lou Leong Guerrero. On this debate, to me, Quintosa Malaguzu, but the Hassel told the same and Malta is a Timangai Guinea, the Un Minutu put for board, the Hassi Manmopus. Sidus Masi. I would like to just express my deepest appreciation for all the leaders ahead of me who has made this journey possible. The hard work that they have done to fight for our manumku, our survivors, and to make a wrong right. And as Congresswoman Berdali had said, it's a small amount of money but it's the healing that is making it much more gratifying for our people of Guam. It was a hard road. Our leaders have passed away who have made this possible, but it is a struggle that we all join together to make it happen. And it is for your honor in your commemoration. And one of the um, reporters had asked me, well, how do you feel about this day? And I said, you know, I feel like I just want to wrap my arms around all of our Manumku and protect our Manumku as they had fought for our peace and freedom, as they had protected us, as they had guided us with their wisdom and their experience. And so today we are the leaders we are today because of the wisdom of Armin Amko, because of the strength of Armin Amko, because of the courage of Armin Amko. And when I knew that it would take a while to get what they deserve, I said, no way in hell. We are going to fight and get the money and the reparations for our man uncle. And I just also would like to express again my deepest appreciation for everyone, and especially my chief of staff, who knew the federal networking, who knew the federal pathway and navigated navigated so we could get to where we are today. I would also like to thank the representatives of the Trump administration who worked very closely with us. And believe me, those people were engaged. Those people want to pay our survivors. Those people want to make a wrong right. And I even when I call them to thank them, they all said, if it wasn't for the persistence of Tony Babalta and put them on track, that this wouldn't have happened. So like my Lieutenant Governor has said, we have the money. I know people are like suspect where the money is. The money is there. My director of DOA says it's there. So we are going to pay those monies out. I also wanted to recognize um, 
Irene Scambaluri because she was very uh, persistent, you know? I mean, she was on the radio every day. She actually called Doug Hofscher, who is the director of the intergovernmental agencies, who is has the ear of the president. And this man worked very hard so Irene could get her money. She even said, he's my boyfriend. <laughs> And so you know how Iron is, very bright joker, but she was one of the most influential people also that was able to do this. So it just goes to show personal relationship, personal knowledge helps. Persmala pagu zibinayam zuni chet mizu esta man bipa imanamku. Thank you. At this time, we will have the official check presentation and handover by Governor Lulian Guerrero, Lieutenant Governor Tenorio, and the Speaker of the Guam Legislature, Tina Munya Barnes. The first presentation is to Felicita Tapahagu Napati. Isabel M. Duenas. Juan Titano San Nicolas. Florence Ninetti Kidagua. <laughs> Gloria L. Guerrero. Joaquin St. Nicholas Luhan. Conception Kenga Luhan. Raymond Sablan Laguanya. Rita Kinichai Santos Cruz. <laughs> Rosita Duenas Diaz. <laughs> May Evelyn Afligui Pelicani. Selena Gumetata Gonzalez. <laughs> Jose Diaz Gumetata. <laughs> and 
And last but certainly not least, Cynthia Tenorio Terlahi. At this time, we invite the families and other elected officials to please join us in acknowledging and honoring our Manamku. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our presentation of checks to our Manamku this morning. We invite everybody to please join us for some light refreshments and a merienda serving. So once again, in honor of our island's Manampu and the first check presentations to our greatest generation, on behalf of Governor Lulian Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio, thank you and God bless. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue to bring you some of the uh, the unforgettable images that are unfolding before us in real time right here at Adeloupe at the governor's conference room as there are 16 adjudicated uh, claims that have been processed and authorized. 14 of the recipients are gracing us with their presence today in an unbelievable show of emotion uh, many, many tears of joy. Certainly a lot of gratitude. Um, there, there's, al there's also a lot of people, to be completely frank, a lot of people are having to go back to a very, very uh, tumultuous and, and dark place. But certainly this moment is about them and will always be for them. As you can never state enough and you can never underscore the fact that this is Guam's greatest generation. And many of the members of the governor's cabinet, mem many members of the 35th Guam legislature and concerned Guamanians all around having some connection or no connection at all are greeting these 14 amazing Guamanians as they are the recipients of the first authorized payments. Um, and everybody respectfully, you know, giving them hugs, honoring them, saying congratulations. Here we see Dr. Robert Underwood, the former University of Guam professor, former congressional delegate, Senator Amanda Shelton. There, of course, Dr. Judy Wanpat, a former legislative speaker, her son, Melvin Wanpat Borja, now the executive director of the Commission on Decolonization. Uh, members of Antonio Wanpat's family, the late former speaker of the legislature. Um, and certainly these are the first of many, many people that will forever be memorialized and hopefully give them some sort of closure for certainly the darkest period in Guam's history. So we will have much, much more as the emotion continues to overflow here in Adeloupe and certainly will for a long time coming as it's been a very memorable ceremony it's been incredible to see firsthand we were pleased privileged and honored to bring it to you online and certainly a moment that none of us will ever forget i'm jason silas everybody thank you so much for streaming us and we'll see you tonight on primetime we'll have more coverage
as the first of the recipients were finally, finally given their reparations. Hafadeh Sijusmasi, and goodbye.